Well, it's not the weekend, but it's close enough. Welcome back to the garage. All right, good morning, everybody. It's about uh, 8 o'clock, just before 8 o'clock on Friday, the 30th of March. Day off work today for Good Friday and the Easter weekend. So uh, taking advantage of that and getting over here. Um, got a whole bunch of new toys over there and everything that I'll show you here in a little bit probably. But first I want to add some more support to the wings. I think I'm just going to take a 2x4 and essentially make a strut in between them. If you can see this guy, he's a little, you probably can't see that reference, but he's a little crooked. And I'm afraid what's happening is, as I'm losing... Uh, stability there and I'm afraid that I'm going to start messing up the B post so I'm just going to take some lag screws that I have and put a piece of 2x4 uh, across both sides here so I'm going to work on that and then uh, get the body up and continue underneath all right I'll show you what I did here uh, with the stability um, again this is you know probably a, a result of just kind of throwing everything together and not really making a plan but all I did was take a 2x4, cut it just shy of the length of the distance between the two boards, try to get the boards re-leveled if needed to be, and just put lag bolts and some washers in them. Um, so that's providing me stability back and forth. The biggest, again, the biggest concern was, was jacking up this area of the B-post where it connects. Um, I had thought about putting bolts under there and coming off where the radius arm attaches in and then coming out, but I would have to come out towards the back of the car come out towards me here and then go back in to attach the wood and I just figured that the getting a, a connection between the, the front and the back would would serve just as good so we'll see how that goes now and again that the problem is is because I don't have enough room in the garage to tilt the car as it sits right here both to the left and to the right and get it to fully stand up I have to kind of slide it and as I was sliding it I was doing some uh, some concerned bending to that to that b post back there so uh, i'm going to try to push the car towards the z and then tilt it towards that side so that i can get underneath and start working that side all right so i told you i had some uh, new toys to show you here so i'm getting close to having to paint so i figured i'd go out and and spend some money here on some some paint rig up now this is all this stuff is from Harbor Freight. I understand that Harbor Freight is not going to have the best quality spray guns. A um, couple reasons I'm doing this. One, they're accessible. Two, the supplies are cheap. And three, looking at pictures and stuff on YouTube and the internet, I'll tell you that a lot of these bodies are not um, very unique. And it's kind of easy to see that some of the larger names and some of the Harbor Freight stuff use the same style of body. Um, and just in my experience with going to Sears now and going to AutoZone and then going to Harbor Freight and looking at it, it looks like there's one big company in the sky somewhere that's making all this stuff and just rebadging it. So I could look at one gun that they have on Amazon that I can pick up that's the opening line of a, of a company that's a very large name, from my research, a very large name, for about 160 bucks to come with two guns. Uh, and I tell you, it looks exactly the same as the Harbor Freight brand, which is $50. So um, I'm willing to take that chance, especially since I'm only going to start with primer underneath the body and I don't really care. So whatever. This is the uh, Harbor Freight or Central Nomadic, whatever you want to call it, 68843. It's their top of the line gun, 70 bucks. I got it on sale for 50 with a coupon. Um, I also have an air filter kind of thing here and then a regulator. This is uh, not the way that I want to connect this I was just kind of playing with it um, so the thing about this gun that's nice unlike their other brands you've got all the adjustments you got the flow adjustment here for the paint um, another adjustment here that seems to deal with air I assume that sucks I'm not I'm not quite sure what that guy does yet and then you have the supply air adjustment down here I got a cleaning kit I got a little stand for it and a bunch of uh, a bunch of nozzles or uh, excuse me a bunch of filters um, so I still have some some work to do but the, the trigger pull feels really good you can uh, since they have all these on display there at Harbor Freight you can go up and, and pull the trigger on all of these this is definitely and by far the cleanest 
trigger pull that you can feel. Uh, you pull a little bit in impacts or just gives you air and then you pull it the rest of the way it would give you paint. Um, it is totally uh, disassemblable, if that's even a word. The only thing is it's a 1.4 millimeter tip. Um, the tips and the needles come together, I guess. Uh, 1.8 millimeter is what's recommended for the primer that I'm looking at, the epoxy primer. Um, but it does allow you to go down to 1.4 as long as you thin it a little bit. The stuff I've been looking at is from Eastwood, getting uh, their epoxy primer. I did email them. They said that you just have to thin it a little bit and it'll work down to 1.4 millimeter. I also emailed Harbor Freight. They do not get replacement nozzles for these guns, but the guy recommended going to other places that do sell stuff and see if you can match some threads. So maybe I can find some nozzles somewhere else. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to go, but, uh, but there you go. I just wanted to show you this. I got a cleaning kit, like I said, some other stuff. Um, but before I got, a, got going, I had to play with the new toys. So we'll see uh, how it works. I'm still uh, at least a couple weeks out from, from playing with it in the first place, but I wanted to show it to you. So no uh, unboxing, I guess you could say. So there you go. All right, another thing I got is a uh, nylon abrasive wheel. Again, this is from Harbor Freight. I don't remember how much it was, three or four bucks, not too much. Um, and the reason I got this was to get the more hard to reach areas that either the angle of the metal being, um, you know, sharp angles, not allowing me to get into like some nooks and crannies. Um, but that's what this thing is. I haven't used it yet. Obviously it's all nice and pretty, uh, and I'm going to use it now and see how it works. So hold on a second. I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll go from there. All right. So if you can see in here with the shadow not being the best. Um, those little spots, I really can't get into that crease to try and get that paint out. Now, granted, it's probably not absolutely critical that I get that out before I paint, um, but you know that's a good spot in there too where the strength of the plate's gonna go. I am gonna weld in there, so that paint uh, could help a lot to get that paint out. So I'll, uh, I'll try up here where I don't have anything scraped off, to give you a little bit better of an angle or somewhere in there, and we'll see how it works. So that's real time. So it, it'll be effective. It doesn't take away the paint that quick. Uh, but again, this is going to be at the very end just to get those last couple spots. So there's not going to be a whole lot of work here. Uh, it's definitely not as good as a wire wheel, but it's flexible, unlike the wire wheel. and allows me to get into those, with the, the, those wire knot wheel that I have. allows me to get those tighter spots that I couldn't get to with the wire wheel. So, you know, an option if you're looking for something like that and you don't want to waste away a bunch of your abrasive little two inch abrasive discs like I was just eating those things up trying to get in there so I figure this is a little bit better of an option. All right except for a couple little spots got the wheel well done I'm going to continue now with the boot floor um yeah there we go. All right it's about quarter after 12 or so moving along uh, it's going a little bit better because I'm using better tools between that nylon brush, which is actually holding up pretty well, and then the uh, the scraper thing, the mesh metal, if you can see that. Kind of lazy to bend down here. Anyway, um, so most of the boot floor is done except for the nooks and crannies that are a pain in the rear uh, up in here and down around that support. And then obviously none of the floor is done. Uh, but I can work my way. That'll take time, but not too bad. So uh, I got about two hours or so left over here, so I might make it. Um, you can see how accessible the uh, bottom of the inner wheel arch is when it's when the car is facing this way. So I'm probably going to get down there and clean that up, make that a, a little easier. Um, 
but otherwise, you know, it's uh, it's tedious, but it's not going too bad. So I'm gonna grab a bite to eat and then keep going. All right, it's about quarter after two. There's the aftermath from today. It slips all over the place. Um, got about uh, I don't know about a third of the uh, the floor done, but not the nooks and crannies of it. So that that actually is probably more like a quarter. Um, got a significant part of the rest of the boot area done um, up in there around that support that's a little painful to get at and then I was able to use that nylon brush and get all inside of that wheel well there I'm real happy the way that came out um, so that'll be good and uh, so yeah this is uh, turning out to be a little difficult up in here again but I expected that and I do have some gap there in between the heel board and that uh, whatever that support is there so I'll try to do the same thing that I did on the passenger side I'm sure it was due to heat but uh, that's what's done today so I'll be back tomorrow I'm not gonna make a, a real big deal about uh, what happened today and uh, and we'll continue uh, continue work tomorrow so so if my demographics on my YouTube channel are correct you know that as you get older those breakfast sandwiches just add up over time so even though it's the weekend all I got is coffee Welcome back to the garage. Alright, this that you see in front of you, ladies and gentlemen, is a 1971, I think, Datsun 240Z. It is a survivor car. Uh, it's the garage mates that he uh, picked up off the original owner a couple months ago. And as far as he's been able to determine, the car has uh, completely original, always stored inside. So that shine, as far again, as far as we know, that shine that you see is, is original shine. Um, even the wheels are original and came from the factory that way. I didn't even know that that was an option, but, uh, but I got uh, some work to do on my Honda this morning, so I'm going to be backing this guy out here if she starts, hopefully, and um, moving her to the side and getting the fit in here and doing some brake work and, and things like that. But, but uh, I've always had a, had a uh, place in my heart for the Zs, owning a 280Z in high school, so uh, I just thought I'd document this. Well, I didn't really uh, get a whole lot done. Um, today was Honda Fit Day, so most of my time was spent doing the fit. I had to replace a uh, a solenoid variable valve timing. The VTEC solenoid had to replace that. Checked out the brakes, rotated the tires, uh, stuff like that. So I didn't get a whole lot of time under Dorothy. I did uh, clean up some of the underneath, but not really worth anything documenting. Uh, and no welding. So have a good rest of your weekend. Uh, happy Easter. I hope, uh, I hope everybody's having a good weekend with friends and family uh, if you choose to do so. And uh, thanks for liking, thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing. Cheers.